The Italian colonization of Libya began in 1911, and it lasted until 1943. The country, which was previously an Ottoman possession, was occupied by Italy in 1911 after the Italo-Turkish War, which resulted in the establishment of two colonies, Italian Tripol Etania and Italian Cyrenaica. In 1934, the two colonies were merged into one colony which was named the Colony of Italian Libya. In 1937, this colony was divided into four provinces, and in 1939, the coastal provinces became a part of metropolitan Italy. The colonization lasted until Libya's occupation by Allied forces in 1943, but it was not until the 1947 Paris Peace Treaty that Italy officially renounced all of its claims to Libya's territory. After the accession to power of the dictator Benito Mussolini in Italy, the fighting intensified. Due to the Libyan people's effective resistance against Italy's so-called pacification campaign, the Italian colonization of the Ottoman provinces of Tripol Etania and Cyrenaica was initially unsuccessful and it was not until the early 1930s that the Kingdom of Italy took full control of the area. This conflict, known as the Second italo sanusi War, ultimately claimed the lives of around 56,000 Libyans. Several reorganizations of the colonial authority had been made necessary because of armed Arab opposition, mainly in Cyrenaica. Between 1919 to 1929, the Italian government maintained the two traditional provinces, with separate colonial administrations. A system of controlled local assemblies with limited local authority was set up but was revoked on the 9th of March 1927. In 1929, Tripoli and Cyrenaica were united as one colonial province. From 1931 to 1932, Italian forces under General Badoglio waged a punitive pacification campaign. Badoglio's successor in the field, General Rodolfo Graziani, accepted the commission from Mussolini on the condition that he was allowed to crush Libyan resistance unencumbered by the restraints of either Italian or international law. Mussolini reportedly agreed immediately and Graziani intensified the oppression. Some Libyans continued to defend themselves, with the strongest voices of dissent coming from the Cyrenaica. Beginning in the first days of Italian colonization, Omar Mukhtar, a Sanusi sheikh, organized and, for nearly 20 years, led Libyan resistance efforts. Omar al-Mukhtar was born in 1858 to a family in the town of Zanzer near Tobruk, in the region of Ottoman Cyrenaica to an Arab tribe, belonging to the Sanusi, before eventually becoming chief or leader of the clan. As a child, Omar lost his father early on and spent his youth in poverty. Omar was endowed with a quick and lively intelligence, was knowledgeable in religious matters, and revealed an energetic and impetuous character, unselfish and uncompromising. Ultimately, he remained very religious and poor, even though he had been one of the most important snoozist figures. He was adopted by a sheikh and was friends with the nephew of Hussein Gariani, Sharif al -Jariani. His uncle was a political religious leader in Cyrenaica, and received his early education at the local mosque, before continuing his studying for eight years at the Sanusi University in Jabub, the holy city of the Sanusi Tariqa. He became a popular expert on the Quran and an Imam, joining the confraternity of the Sanusi, he also came to be well informed of the social structure of his society, as he was chosen to settle intertribal disputes. After 1912, Omar Mukhtar rose to prominence as a hero and inspiration to Libyans, particularly the youth. The message of his resistance was clear. Who gives Italy the authority to dominate and subjugate us while we are an independent nation? He quickly started enlisting young Libyans into his army and intensified the guerrilla campaign against the Italian colonial force. 
Omar Mukhtar made the desert his most effective weapon in battle. Since he was a native of a desert village and was familiar with its geology and atmosphere, he would ride out of a ravine or a grove of palm trees, accompanied by his young followers, with pistols draped over their shoulders and attack the Italian forces. The war between the forces of Mukhtar and the Italians grew bloody and horrifying every passing day. To keep him under control, the Italians laid out hundreds of kilometers of barbed wire across the desert, but Mukhtar's attacks and resolve only intensified. Now, in an effort to put more pressure on him, the Italians began to detain women and children. It is estimated that there were more than 125,000 children and women were incarcerated by the Italians, two-thirds of whom were killed inside the prisons. Yet Mukhtar's spirit and perseverance did not waver, and he continued to fight with all of his might. On September 11, 1931, the Lion of the Desert and his crew ambushed a significant Italian army convoy. Both sides started firing their weapons. Mukhtar, who was at the ripe age of 70, fell victim to the enemy's trap. His arm was broken as he crashed to the ground after his horse slid. He crawled toward his downed gun anyhow, but the Italian soldiers swiftly surrounded him. Omar Mukhtar, a 70-year-old who was old but still vigorous, was brought before the military court while he was in chains. Outside the courthouse, Italian guards were stationed beside long lines of soldiers who were standing by to deal with any potential threats. Mukhtar recited the Holy Quran while standing by himself in the corner of the room. He continued reciting the Quran, even as the Italian judge sentenced him to death by hanging. The judge drew him to himself and said, I am very sorry for your death in this manner. To which Mukta replied in a loud voice, This is a proud and lovely conclusion of my life. As he turned to face the military officials, there was stillness throughout the entire exchange. The military court judge finally broke the tension by making him an intriguing offer. You will be forgiven if you write to your supporters and ask them to cease supporting the war against Italy. He said, My finger which is raised in every prayer to testify to the oneness of Allah and the prophethood of Muhammad. I would prefer death a thousand times over writing a letter in support of falsehood with these fingers. He then looked directly into the judge's eyes and added, I would prefer death a thousand times over. His self-assurance and delight were evident when he was executed by hanging on September 16, 1931, in a public field. On the orders of the Italian court and with Italian hopes that Libyan resistance would die with him, Mukhtar was hanged before his followers in Saluk concentration camp at the age of 73. His example continued to inspire resistance even after his capture and execution. His face is currently printed on the Libyan tendon our note in memory and recognition of his patriotism. Shortly after, his body was found hanging from the rope. Eventually, Libya was declared free in 1947, but became an independent state in 1951. Thank you for watching Death Row.